Hello and welcome to Do It Yourself Musician. Today I'm going to do a sort of a catch-up video or follow-up video because there's several things that I, I've done in previous videos that I said I was going to follow up on. So I'm going to do some information over that and uh, also some odds and ends and maybe a little bit about stuff I have planned. So I'll just go in order here. Uh, so let's start with video number two, and that was the JBL LSR 305 video. That's uh, the video that I have that has the most views of anything I've done, uh, and thank you for that. Um, it uh, uh, was one of my earliest videos, so it's a little scattered, I think. But <laughs> it, anyways, uh, as far as the... The LSR 305s, I think I got those in August or September of last year. So I've had them quite a while now. And um, my general thoughts on them is that they're magnificent. They are great monitors. They're worth everything that, you know, the price. They're just totally worth the price. Uh, I'm kind of an old school guy. So, you know, I, I've i used NS10Ms in the past, uh, you know, near, for near fields, great uh, classic, uh, near field monitors. Um, and these 305s, I'm just like, I don't care about NS 10s anymore. I just don't give me these 305s. They're, they're that good. They're fantastic. Great, great, great monitors. So if you're looking for monitors, uh, some smallish, uh, near fields, get some 305s. I don't have the sub yet. Um, I'm probably going to still get the sub, I don't don't really think you need it. Um, they do have uh, the 305s do have good good bass response. It's very accurate, very flat uh, bass response. So I don't really think you need it, especially if you got some good headphones. Uh, you can always slap on headphones and figure out where the bass is in your mix. But I might get the sub anyways. Uh, moving on from that, video number four, I did the Hi-Fi uh, DIY USB isolator thingy because I had uh, noise in my system uh, sort of a, a I don't know what you call it it's, it's a whine that, that you get that comes through the USB bus I uh, I don't know if that's actually being generated by the USB bus or just something in the computer that's whining uh, but it worked fine for me uh, it is still working for me it's still hooked up into my um, my mixer over there because I still have that hooked up into my computer which is behind me that that is not the computer I'll talk about that in a minute um, yeah I've still got uh, that hooked up because I still have my Behringer which is a two channel USB interface it's still hooked up and I'm still using that even though I've bought since then a Sapphire Pro 40 interface which I haven't quite started using I've Done a little recording with it to test it out, but so yeah, the USB oscillator is awesome. If you're having problems with that kind of stuff, look at that video and maybe pick one of those up. Um, it will be less of an issue for me when I start using the Sapphire because it's uh, obviously a FireWire device. Um, all right, moving on. The Roadrunner guitar stool, video number five. I'm sitting on it right now. <laughs> it's uh, that thing, I thought it was going to fail like, <laughs> like right away because uh, it's like the cheapest thing Guitar Center sells. It's plastic um, on the seat of this thing, and uh, but it's awesome. Like, I haven't put it through extremely heavy use, but, you know, it's a, you know, I'd say medium duty use. I, I use sit on it just about every day when I'm sitting here. Uh, the padding on it was another thing I was worried about, but it's actually, it's pretty good uh, for me. I haven't felt like I've needed to to add any more padding to it. I mean, I'll sit on it for hours at a time uh, when I'm sitting here mixing and stuff or I'm just playing guitar. Um, 
So it's fine. The, the thing that did happen, and I'll try to get a shot of it for you, is the feet, the rubber feet on the bottom of it, uh, they, uh, the metal broke through those feet and it was starting to tear up my carpet. So I wound up just putting some crutch tips on there and you can get crutch tips at, at um, Home Depot or Lowe's or wherever. Um, and I... I put white ones on, but you should probably get some black ones because they'll look cooler. But I just had—I happen to have white ones here already, uh, and so I put those on. And that's the only thing I've done to it. It's been fine. Uh, so I, yeah, I'd recommend that. Go out and buy it. It's a Roadrunner guitar stool, and that was video number five. If you want to watch that, uh, from video number eight, those were the auction finds uh, that I did. And let me say right away that. Uh, that auction, I didn't say it at the time, I don't think, but I think you could see it on the price tag that held up to the camera, is that that was the ABC Music Store in Burbank, California. And it, that's a store that had been there uh, for decades, and it closed down, I don't know, about 12 years ago or something, way before I moved to Los Angeles. Uh, and, it, and it did have tons of of stuff in it, like really cool stuff. It was like a sort of a time capsule, if you will. Uh, but it did turn out that at that first auction, I actually bought most of the cool stuff out of there. Uh, I think uh, in between then and now, somebody else had actually gotten in there privately and bought a bunch of stuff because that stuff's been showing up on eBay and I know for sure that was not in the auction and I didn't have a chance to bid on that stuff. Uh, just a few days ago, they had a second auction there, and I went to that, and uh, there was only a couple things that I even thought about bidding on uh, that were there. And they actually finally let uh, bidders go into the store and sell that entire store out, what was left there. And there was some okay stuff in there. There was a, a couple of file cabinets full of... Um, of manuals and, and uh, technical schematics for old synthesizers and samplers and all kind of cool stuff like that, that I really wanted, but I couldn't, I couldn't bid on it because they decided to sell the entire contents of that store in one go. And some guy bought it for $2,500. Uh, and I, I didn't want all that junk, so I wasn't going to, going to bid on it, but uh, hopefully he I know I happen to know that guy is an is an auctioneer himself and he runs an auction site and hopefully he'll auction it there and maybe it'll show up on eBay and I'll get a chance to maybe just get what I want. Uh anyways, uh going on from that from video number eight, the auction finds, uh, if you want to check that out, there was a BBE Sonic Maximizer. I did look at that further and it's dead. The the transformer in that thing is toast. Uh, I was going to show it to you, but I just, I mean, I'm just chunked that thing. It was just crap. Uh, it just wasn't worth it. Um, so it was dead. It's done. Uh, the Digicheck GSP-5 was another thing that was broken in that video. I have not had a chance to look at that again. I do think I'll be able to fix that, though. I just haven't had time to look at it. Uh, the ADA delay um, that's featured in that video, which is working fine. It was like brand new in box. That thing's awesome, um, but however, it's not for me. Um, it doesn't have MIDI on it. My Roland SDE twenty five hundred delay sounds way better than that thing. Though the ADA, you know, I guess it's it sounds okay. It's cool. Um, I'm probably gonna sell it though. Uh, I'll probably sell it on Craigslist or maybe eBay it. If you're interested in buying it, maybe send me an email at Jason at doityourselfmusician dot com. Maybe I'll sell it to you. Um, it, it is kind of cool, though, because ADA, if you look uh, at their history, uh, they are or were kind of a, you know, a Silicon Valley startup thing in the early 80s. So, you know, they were guys that were, you know, fresh out of college and started up doing uh, computer type stuff at the same time as, you know, the, the computer revolution, the home computer revolution started in the late seventies, early eighties. Um, and that ADA, that particular delay, that is the, it's sitting over here. It's the digitizer four delay. That thing, it has the same processor as the old ZX 80, uh, cheap ass home computer 
thing that, that came out in the 80s, which was, you know, I'm kind of nostalgic for that stuff. So, so it's cool that, that that's what that is, you know. And it was just some guys uh, that, you know, decided to make a digital delay, delay, you know, at the time. They were into music gear. They weren't really into home computers and stuff. So that's what they did is they made music gear. Uh, and it's kind of cool for that, you know, nostalgia purposes. But like I said, I think I am going to sell that thing. I don't really hold on to gear that I don't use. Um, so I'm probably going to sell it, um, sell that thing on, uh, the rest of the stuff in that video, like the, the, uh, sampler, the S330 Roland, the S550 sitting down here, the U220, I'm going to use all that stuff. So I'm keeping it. It's awesome. It all works and everything. So good to go on that. Uh, all right, moving on from video number 10 was the uh, WGS VET 10 speakers. That's interesting, they're both 10. Uh -huh. uh, the VET 10 speakers, I've had those you know, installed since I did that video for a few months now. They're awesome. Uh, and I've definitely proven to myself now that the original speakers that were in my Super Reverb, um, those things, the CTS on Nikos, as good as they sound and stuff, one or two of those obviously has some problem. And what I think it is, is I think there's some voice coil rub happening in, in one or two of those things because that sort of weird sound, which is very, very hard to actually hear. You just don't hear it when you're playing the amp live. But when you stick a microphone right up in the speaker and you're listening back on some good monitors or some headphones... Yeah, you hear there's some weird sort of <clears throat> vibration in the noise. Is the only way I, in the sound is all I, I can describe it as. It's just some strange vibration. That's gone now um, when I put the VET 10s in there. So something was wrong with those speakers. Unfortunately, I mean, eh, you know, I, I don't know uh, with that. You know, it kind of sucks that, that the original speakers maybe are a little damaged or something. But I don't know. Uh, I'm probably never going to sell this amp, so it doesn't matter, uh, anyways. But the Vet Tens, they're awesome. They're <laughs> they're freaking cool. They sound really good. They they did everything. They got rid of that noise and they mellowed out the top end of that amp. It's not harsh anymore. It just it rocks. It sounds so good. Uh, and <clears throat> I will link in below a little SoundCloud clip that I I did. Uh, it's pretty much the first thing I've recorded since I put the vet tens in there and, and I caution you it's just an idea it's a sketch it took me like 30 minutes to throw it together but it is something that I'm probably going to expand out uh, into a to a full a full-on song um, so it's it's not that great yet uh, but you can hear what it sounds like you know you can hear what the vet tens sound like and that was recorded with uh, both the Behringer mixer and the Sapphire. Uh, I don't remember which is which, but there is some Sapphire Pro 40 in that. Um, yeah, and it was recorded with the new pedal board and my rack. So you can hear what that sounds like too if you want to hear what that stuff sounds like. <clears throat> so I'll put that link below. It's a SoundCloud clip, and I'll probably, like I said, expand that into a full song. And uh, I think that's maybe going to be the audio that I just let you guys hear. Uh, the other music I work on, I'm going to keep a secret until it's ready. Um, all right. Video number 13 was the tapestry strap keeper for acoustic in pin jacks. <clears throat> it's been cool. Uh, I haven't had a problem with it. I, in fact, I forgot it was on there for a long time. So I guess that makes it a good product. It's just working. You just forget it's there. Uh, so yeah, that thing's good. Um, it's worth the money that I paid for it. So if you're interested in that, that was video number 13, the tapestry strap keeper. And I think that was tapestry.com for that thing. Acoustic M pin jack, uh, strap keeper. All right. Now for some odds and ends, <clears throat> I wanted to do one thing. I was going to do a video on this, but it's really not worth having a video for it. Um, my, my old samplers, the Roland samplers, like the 760, the S550, the S330, they output video. And that's what you see on the screen right here. This is the S760 output. 
that you see. <clears throat> it's kind of cool. They output video, and you can work with the sampler when it outputs video with the, the RC100 remote control, which is this, or the mouse, the Roland MU1 mouse. Um, with this uh, remote control, you can just sit here and, like, you know, just edit, edit your samples, you know, go into performance play and, uh, you know, try audition patches when you're making music. It's like a really good way to sit there and go through through samples, especially if you're using it as a playback device, because there's thousands and thousands of samples in the Roland Sample Library, which is one reason to buy an S760 or an S700. <coughs> Excuse me. Because there's tons of cool samples um, in their library. But yeah, it's it's a good way to sit here and use this these instruments. And uh, if I advance this down to, I think it's here, that there, the black and white, that's the output from the S550, so you can look at that too. And also the three, S330 does the same thing. <clears throat> so what I've done in the past, and you'll see on my uh, early videos, like one and two, you'll see that the, the output from the S760 actually shows up on my uh, desktop or floating above Reaper. It's in, like in a little screen. And the way I was doing that was with this diamond uh, device. This is a USB device. The sampler outputs an S-video signal and this diamond device can take S-video. It can also take regular composite video and outputs it on USB. And you can use that to, you know, put it on your desktop in a little frame to just see the video there, which is cool. It's just like, you, you know, when you're using Reaper, it's easy just to look at that and have it work. But after a while, maybe two months, this thing failed um, on me. Uh, and I thought it was maybe the drivers in the computer that caused it to quit working. Um, and I, I, I went back and forth with diamond on it for a while and, uh, they were, you know, they told me some things to do and then they actually went silent for weeks and I, you know, sent them kind of a nasty email and they finally replied and they were just like, it's broke, dude, just replace it, you know, return it. Um, and I didn't, you know, I kind of didn't want to buy another one after that. So I bought this one at Fry's, which is the same kind of thing. This is the Sabrent uh, version of it. This didn't work at all. It was broke from the get-go. Just, I don't know. It should have worked, but it didn't. It just would not display video correctly. And so it's pretty much crap too, like the Diamond. The Diamond, I mean, the Diamond did work for a while, but I mean, you know, I think I paid 50 and maybe got a $20 rebate. And it just broke right away. I don't, it's just, I don't know. I don't trust things like that. It was awesome, though, having it on, you know, it's it just kind of like a plug-in. It's like floating over over Reaper while I'm using it, you know. So that was cool. Um, but, yeah, I just gave up on it. And that's why you see this little TV. You know, I'm just going to use this TV from now on. I attached a little bracket to the back of my... Uh, my Ikea Rast Rack here, which was uh, just in the last video I did. I've already modified it again by putting a little bracket that goes out the back of it that I could set this little TV on. And this little TV, obviously, it is a TV from the era that those samplers are from, which is like, you know, early to mid-90s. So this is like a 480p flat screen TV. Like these, you know, you find these things sitting on the sidewalk people just like Ugh, you know get rid of it it's not even hd but it is cool because it shows uh, uh the right aspect which is the 4.3 aspect not the hd 16.9 so you know the output from the samplers looks right on there and uh the funny story about getting this was is how hard it was to get one uh i couldn't find any of you know i've, I've seen them just laying around I've seen them at Goodwill for $10, but I could not find one when I, when I needed one. 
Um, and so I went on eBay looking for them and people sometimes on eBay are just morons. I don't, I mean, you, you can't, if you're going to sell something on eBay, you know, there's a little thing you can click there. that says sold auctions. It's going to tell you what, what people are paying for these things, you know, I, and I went through eBay for weeks on end looking at these old outdated, not useful anymore. 4.3 TV, flat flat screen TVs. This is not even an HD TV. And people are asking like $200 for these things. And no, they're not collector's items. It's just ridiculous is what it is. So anyways, even on Craigslist, uh, not a lot of them listed, but people were just asking stupid prices for them. You know, I'm thinking $20. Maybe, you know, maybe I'll go 40 if I can find one close by. I mean, it's, I'm the only guy that's looking for one of these for my old samplers, you know, I'm sorry, I'm ranting right now, but you know, it's just crazy. It took, it took, like I said, a few months to, to get this set up because people are asking outrageous stuff. I mean, you know, yeah, you can ask whatever you want for something, you know, Hey, I'm aware of that, but you know, there's a point of being ridiculous, uh, with it, you know, but anyways, I finally found one on eBay and I got it for $21. And the guy actually happened to live nearby, uh, and he he actually offered to bring it by. I mean, I think shipping he wanted ten dollars or something for shipping, and he was like, "Can I? I'll just bring it by, dude." And I was like, "Sure, I'll pay you know whatever. Take the ten dollars for shipping and bring it by." So he brought it by, I hooked it up. It works. It's awesome. You know, now when I'm sitting here, you know, using Reaper and, and I'm using my samplers, I can just look right over here and uh, and do it. You know. It'd be cool if it was on the desktop, but no, whatever. It's That's going to be fine. It's going to work. Uh, I also have a, an HD TV over here that you can't see that I I can output that too. But, you know, using that, I have to turn around and look at it, and it just hurts. I'd rather just have it here where I can play the W30, you know, and control the samplers and cool. Uh, so that's that. And last on my list here is, you know, maybe some... I'm just going to keep doing videos about whatever I do here in my little home studio. I'm just videotaping it and showing it to you guys. Um, future things, the Sapphire, I uh, already started a video. I, I've had that for quite a while now. I got that right before Christmas, I think, or maybe just after Christmas. Got an excellent deal on it. If you guys are looking for pro audio stuff on, on eBay uh, or pro audio stuff just cheap, go on to eBay there's certain dealers, I probably, I don't know if I want to mention their name. It'll be pretty obvious to you if you've used eBay a lot. Uh, and they'll they'll sell things, a lot of dealers on there will sell things, and they'll call them new other, like new open box or whatever. And clearly, uh, you know, they'll list, you know, hey, I've got 15 Sapphire Pro 40s that are new open box. No. <laughs> They're just saying that to avoid breaking their dealer agreements um, and they're reputable dealers. Uh, and I'm, I'm not going to mention who they are. You'll have to figure this out for yourself uh, on there and, and, you know, be careful, you know, you know, when you do this, because some of them, some of them may actually be returns, but there's some that are, it's fairly obvious that they're trying not to break their dealer agreement and sell it for, what they can actually sell for, and it's very low. I think I got my Sapphire Pro 40, I think basically retails around 500. Maybe you can get it for 450. I hope our numbers are right here. Um, I got my Sapphire Pro 40 for $340. It was brand new, unused, unopened. So a little tip for you, go on eBay. If you're looking for Pro Audio stuff, those guys on there are cutthroat. They're trying to undermine each other every which way they can. But like I said, be careful and study what you're actually buying before you buy it. But anyways, I've done some video on my Pro 40 already uh, with, you know, like getting the proper sound card and everything for, for a PC and all that stuff. I've, I've already recorded. I'll do more on that. And I think the next big upgrade I'm going to make to the whole setup here is uh, I mentioned in the last video, I'm going to get probably a 16 input mixer. Um, and I'm thinking about getting a Mackie, a VLZ four. Uh, that's very expensive though. Um, I might get a used VLZ three 
uh, and try that out. Uh, if not, I might actually upgrade to that bigger Behringer. Uh, I kind of like, if I go bigger, I kind of would like to get a Mackie though. Um, and mostly the reason for that is, is I want to, all of my sampler outputs, I want to have all that stuff plugged in and ready to record at any time or just ready to be used at any time. Uh, and I, I have a, like a mic input, like you, like you see here. And I have another mic input for my guitar cab. I like to have all that stuff plugged in all the time without the need to repatch any of it, which I, I'm doing right now. I'm sort of having to repatch some, some things. Uh, so I'd like to have that all plugged in. And since the Sapphire is eight inputs, uh, the Mackie VLZ3, it has eight direct outs. And I would kind of like to do a little bit of an old school situation where I could send the eight direct outs of the Mackie into eight channels of the Sapphire Pro 40 and send the eight outs of the Sapphire, or probably not eight, but more like six outs of the Sapphire Pro 40 back into the other, you know, six or eight channels of the 16 channel Mackie uh, and use some outboard gear. Cause I've got, I've got tons of old school outboard gear that I like. Uh, generally I record straight in, like if it's a reverb or something, or maybe the one of the delays, I record with it going in and I'm fine with it, but sometimes I'll record something and think, man, I think I would like to have, you know, a little bit of this particular reverb on there. And it'd be nice to be able to just send it back out of the computer through that box, whatever it is, whatever piece of outboard gear and, and back into the computer, you know, which I'm cool with that stuff. I'm kind of old school like that. And I, you know, I like noise. <laughs> I, I, I hate when things are too clean and too perfect. You know, I want raunchy noise and stuff. I want stuff to sound thick and fat and that's how you do it. You know? Um, so anyways, that's it. That's, you know, where I'm going. And those are some updates on previous videos. And, uh, I hope you enjoy what I'm doing here on do it yourself musician. Uh, and if you are subscribe, uh, thumbs up, the videos it helps uh it helps me show up in uh in uh youtube searches uh if you have any comments uh leave comments if you want to send me an email i already gave it out jason at uh do it yourself and that's another thing i'm working on the website there's nothing there right now it's, it's just a uh, placeholder basically but i'm gonna have a little bit of a website um mostly my main thing will be YouTube, though, not really a website, but I will be having a website just because there's some things that uh, I want to to make available because I have the the means to do it. Like, you know, uh, operating systems for old uh, synth and samplers like, you know, I've, I've got tons. I, I can make those things all day, so I'll make those available for sale on my website. Um, and it won't be for a lot of money. It'll just be to cover the disc and shipping costs and stuff like that. And there's some other things like you guys obviously know that I'm, I'm build pedal boards and stuff. So I'll probably have some pedal boards for sale on there and some custom pedals and things like that. But that's to come. And of course I'll announce that whenever I get there and this video is getting way too long already. So <laughs> well, I'm trying to stop that too, trying to, keep these things shorter but anyways you know hey it's cool it's youtube i can do 30 minutes or an hour two hours whatever all right cool thanks for watching i'll see you next time